So you have a system design interview coming up and you have spent countless hours listening to YouTube gurus talk about consistency, availability, sharding and whatnot. And maybe you are feeling a little more confident about your preparation. I hate to break it to you, but system design interviews are a scam. You see, in the last five years, I did my fair share of tech interviews. And if there is one thing I'm more confident about than solving a two-sum problem, it's that system design interviews are nothing but an acting performance. And I'm saying it despite cracking many of these interviews myself. Today, I'll share how I reached this conclusion. In the process, I'll also give you three useful tips on how to deliver an Oscar-worthy performance in system design interviews. Let's do this. Imagine you are in a system design interview. And you are asked to design a Facebook-like newsfeed. The interviewer wants you to list out all the functional and non-functional requirements before they are finished asking the question. Then, they expect you to talk about different services needed to generate the newsfeed. Once that's done, you are expected to talk about your choice of database, database schema, and how to shard this database for scale. And if you somehow get that far, you are asked whether we should have a pull mechanism or a push mechanism to generate the newsfeed. By some miracle, you are able to argue for one of these. The answer is always a hybrid approach. All this happens in under 45 minutes. Let's be real here. No real world systems are designed in 45 minutes. Unless of course, it's Craigslist. Facebook newsfeed was launched in 2006 and it took them more than a year to come up with the like button. It took them another two years to go from a reverse chronological newsfeed to a more personalized newsfeed. Hundreds of iterations and about 15 years later, we have this thing that we call newsfeed. The architecture of systems behind my newsfeed was designed by hundreds, if not thousands of engineers. And it took them many, many years to arrive at this optimized architecture that caters to millions of users. And to expect an entry or a mid-level engineer to design a Facebook newsfeed in 45 minutes is nothing but absurd. Whenever I make this point, I'm often told that interviewers don't expect you to know everything and they just want you to talk about a certain aspect of the design. Well, my answer to that is, they do. This one interviewer might want to talk about this one aspect of the problem, but then there is this other one who expects me to be an expert in totally different domain. To add to that, in most cases, being an expert in one specific thing is much harder than knowing a little bit about different things. To prove that, let me ask you to design a very simple, highly available key value database in 45 minutes. Well, good luck with that because it took a group of exceptional engineers at Amazon 15 years to design DynamoDB, which does exactly that. So if you're expecting someone to build a news feed or DynamoDB in 45 minutes, all you are testing is whether the person has seen a similar problem before. And this is where I want to give you the first very important tip, and that is about where to find problems that are similar to interview questions. In my opinion, the best place to practice some system design interview questions is this course called Grokking the System Design Interviews. In this course, you can learn some basic concepts like data partitioning, consistent hashing, and web sockets. This course will also walk you through design of some real-world systems like Instagram. You'll learn how to design different microservices, which database to use, how to shard this data, and how to make the system more available and resilient. Other than Instagram, this course will also cover some other popular apps like Facebook Messenger, YouTube, and Uber. Since this is a paid course, I also want to give you a free alternative. For that, I recommend this YouTube channel called Code Curly. On top of covering basics, this channel also has videos explaining architecture of some popular apps like Twitter, Amazon, and WhatsApp. Another reason I think system design interviews are broken is the fact that most mid or senior level engineers never get a chance to design systems like the ones that are asked in these interviews. I have worked at multiple big companies now and I have never met a single senior engineer who ever got an opportunity to design a system that is similar to what's asked in the interviews. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure there is a small percentage of engineers who has done it but I can assure you that they are not the majority. All the engineers I have worked with are really smart and I have no doubt that they are capable of designing any kind of systems. But the opportunities simply are not there. So why in the world would you test all these engineers on the skills that they don't need for their job? I understand why Fangs or other big companies would do it. They have so many people applying for a very small number of jobs, so they can afford to be more selective. Hiring in these companies is fairly generic and people change their teams all the time. So more the number of skills, the better it is. What I fail to understand is why these smaller companies follow suit. By doing this, these companies end up losing a lot of perfectly capable candidates. So unless you're hiring for a greenfield project or a startup that is growing at a very fast pace, doing system design interviews for entry to mid-level software engineer positions makes no sense. Another reason why system design interviews don't work is because system design interviews are very subjective. Like they tell you before the interview, there is no right answer. Well, they lie. There's only one right answer to that question. 
What is that answer you might ask? Well, it's the one answer that the interviewer came prepared with. I know this because I have given more than a dozen system design interviews myself. And even after trying really hard, I have never been able to steer an interviewer away from the solution they came prepared with. Except maybe one time. Your solutions are crap, you might say. That's within the realm of possibilities. I hear you. In that case, I would expect the interviewers to give me some logical reason for not picking my design. But I hardly got any. To be honest, I don't think it's interviewer's fault. As I already said, designing highly scalable systems is very hard. And most engineers never get an opportunity to build systems like that. So when forced to do these highly vague system design interviews, it's my hunch that most interviews pick some known architecture, memorize the solution, and ask it in the interview. I might be wrong about this one. So if you're an interviewer and you came up with your own solution for the problem you ask in the interview, let me know in the comments. As I already said, the only right solution is the one your interviewer knows. That's why I want to give you this second very important tip. And that is, never design anything in the interview before checking in with your interviewer. In a system design solution, there are so many different aspects that you can discuss. You can talk about capacity calculations, API design, database choice, database schema, sharding, and whatnot. It's impossible to do everything in a short 45-minute interview. But you want to make sure that you cover all the important things that are there in interviewer's solution. So check in with your interviewer at every step to see what they're interested in and design those components. For example, most people advise you to do capacity estimates before starting on the solution. That's the part where you do some calculations based on the number of daily active users and amount of data they upload. Using these numbers, you estimate the amount of resources you'll need for the service. In most cases, you never end up using those numbers. I always ask my interviewer if they want me to do the capacity estimates or should I just start designing different components and we can discuss how we would scale them. More often than not, the interviewers are interested in the logical reasoning rather than the actual numbers. So listen to your interviewer very carefully. The last major issue with system design interviews is that different people have their own interpretation of system design. Let me give you some examples from my own interview experiences. In a system design interview at one of the most popular tech companies, I was given a text file containing logs from their service and asked to write code to extract some information using these logs. At another company, I was asked to design a parking lot which is essentially an object-oriented design question. Lastly, in a very popular startup, I was asked to do an API design without ever talking about databases or anything related to scalability. So when someone says system design interview, don't just assume that it means the same thing as you think. And that's why I want to give you this final tip, which is the most important tip. Don't ever start working on the solution without clarifying every aspect of the problem statement. Even if you think you got the question, repeat what you understood in detail to your interviewer and ask for their confirmation. Remember the interview I told you about where I was given a text file containing logs? I only got to know about the log file at the 40 minute mark in the interview, at which point it was already too late. So ask as many clarifying questions as needed before starting on your solution. But this video would not be complete without telling you how to fix these interviews. What if I tell you that there is a tech company which has already found a way to fix system design interviews? That company is Square. For those of you who don't know, Square is a fintech company that provides services like point of sale, payments, and banking. When I got invited to their on-site interview, I received a surprising email from them. They gave me the system design interview question a couple of weeks before the interview. When I asked them why they did so, their answer was very simple. No systems can be designed in 45 minutes and we want to give you enough time to prepare. They told me that in the actual interview, they would like to discuss the design trade-offs I made to arrive at the final solution. And that's when I learned that system design interviews are not really broken. It's the way we do them that needs to be fixed. If you're having a hard time tracking coding interviews, watch this video at the top. If you want to know how I became a software engineer at Google without a CS degree, you can watch this one on the bottom. I'll see you in the next one.